Welcome, Welcome to episode 117 of Powerful Nonsense. A little bit of a rusty one. Shaky start. Shaky start, but... Things are on the up, hopefully. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> this is like, we are riding by the seat of our pants. Is that right? Is that right, Tenor Yes. Uh, on this episode. But we, we want to pose a question to you. Mm-hmm. I right. think it's an important one. I think it's a really important question, which is why we're kind of doing this one off the cuff, because we're like, Thanks. have to do an episode on that. Right. Question is, who are you modelling? You. Who are you modelling? Yeah, I think it's really important because I think in terms of modelling, like you say, it's not all about like, I mean, you did say in the one we had to delete, yeah. it's not about like catwalk, it's not about kind of showing yourself off. <laughs> yeah. It's actually along those lines of like, who have been the people? Who's influencing you? Yeah, who's been influencing you for like your mm-hmm. whole life? This can go back to childhood. <laughs> this right. could go back to now. And I think it's just, especially for entrepreneurs, I think you need to kind of see what are the actions you're taking and who has influenced you to take those kind of actions. Mm-hmm. And I think... We are a podcast about entrepreneurship, yep. and I think people need to understand that actually all the behaviours that you do up till now have helped you to kind of make the decisions that have led you to where you currently are today. And if that means some, you're somebody who's listened to this and you're in a nine to five, it's because your whole sort of perception or worldview for your whole life has been something about the idea that you do your education, you get your degree, and then suddenly you go get yourself a nine to five. And yep. that is your worldview. And I think for us, it was for so long, and we'd been modelling this way of thinking. I know you've always wanted to be an actor, so maybe more so me. Yeah, but even so, like, it being a, it's interesting, because I always say, like, oh, I kind of knew what I was laying myself in for with being an actor, because my dad's been self-employed for as long as I know. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of ready for that and kind of thought I knew what it entailed. But I really had no idea, because... I never really sat and watched my dad looking for jobs. And, you know, if I'd known what being an actor really meant, I probably would have paid (laughs) more attention. Um, But because that was never really... Because, like, school and education was never really kind of discussing that side of things... I just kind of, it didn't really it's occur quite weird. to me. It's quite weird, actually, that you kind of went through that system, knowing that you want to be an actor, but then... And knowing that... Did, did you actually think that maybe you'd do an actor nine to five and that would be a job that you then do? <laughs> I mean, I was really... I, I didn't... The thing is, I think, because I saw my dad... I never really made the connection that being an actor meant being that you're self-employed basically. and yeah. that being freelance. I'd never really made that connection. And I think it's because the education system never really went, oh, yeah, that's a, that's an option as well. It was kind of like you go and you study, you get your results, you go get a job. And so in my head, like, acting was a, a job. Um, and so it was like, I don't know, I just never, for whatever reason, never made that connection, ever. <laughs> ever. You just blipped it out. Until I went to start my training and then I was like oh no well you know my dad's self-employed and whatever and then I made the connection Mm -hmm. but I think because it was never discussed before I think that's an important point because I do think that shows you that I think it's good that you kind of blurred that out but I think some people are then unconsciously it's not good that I blurred it out well it wasn't it's awful that I blurred it out because I think that's set because I'm now having like if I hadn't if I had realized then I'd have been sat watching my dad like how he sort of runs Because my dad deals with agents. My dad, you know, would if he was out of work, I wouldn't see my dad. He'd be locked in his room mm-hmm. for like days until he got on another job lined up. Same with my dad as well, though. I guess my dad is a builder, and he kind of mm-hmm. has to get his own clients. He's self-employed. Right. But if I'd know, if I'd made that connection, yeah, then I probably would have been much more prepared for what I have to deal with now than I am. Yeah, and I think that's because people are sort of like unconsciously oblivious in some ways it's sort of like a naivety but it's a naivety because you've got your you kind of trust what you're being taught especially at a young age you're kind right. of like well i'm modeling everyone else and everybody's telling me if i don't get these good grades i don't get a good job and i'm gonna have a pretty shit life yeah and so <laughs> you kind of just fall for it and you kind of believe them you're a child and they're mm-hmm. adults and they seem to be living as an adult and that's right. what you want to become and so i think i think that's what's quite important i think when you are modeling people if anything, I think once you get to a certain age, you need to then question the people you're modelling. Right. And I think probably a lot of people find themselves in jobs and they're just like, well, I got here because I was just doing the things or the actions that, <laughs> that I just I thought... That I was supposed to do. That I thought mm-hmm. I was supposed to do. And I think that's what came to us. It's kind of like, wow, we realised like the internet, if anything, kind of just opened us up to this new world where we was like, okay, mm-hmm. the models of behaviour that we've kind of adopted our whole lives and the ways of thinking there's an alternative option. And it was the whole idea for the yeah. podcast just to kind of say, wow, we didn't know this existed. Right. We're questioning who we're modelling. And then I think as you kind of get more into it, 
suddenly you realise actually there was a kind of group of people that although that uh, although the majority of people were showing you this nine to five option, there's these other guys that are doing it differently mm-hmm. and they're succeeding in it. And then the same for you is the whole idea about seeing acting as a business. You start seeing, well, actually they don't have a nine to five job and this is the way they run their life. And I think for me, the kind of impetus behind this actual um, episode was the idea that I think if you want to create, I think what's happened is that we now have a new vision of what we would like our lives to be. Right. But we're so stuck with the modeling and the behaviors and the habits and the attitude of a previous generation it's getting in the way. that is now getting in the way. And so you're getting a lot of friction. And so I think that. Oh, big time. Do you know what? That is probably one of the biggest things I battle with is this friction between, I think partly because as well, I've got a day job and I'm trying to, mm-hmm. you know, sort out all my other stuff, you know, with my acting career and stuff. And so there's this constant friction of like what's expected of me by other people yeah. that aren't involved in what I do. And then what's expected of the industry that I am involved in, because they're two very different things. And I mean, even to the point of like, people are like, oh, well, why don't you like, as an example, like, I was really, 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 really grateful that the guy did this. But also I was like, well, it doesn't really help me. Uh, a guy um, sent me something through that was basically, oh, like, do you want to do some acting? And I was like, oh, yes, of course I want to do some acting. And it was essentially, uh, basically like a self-taped thing that you send through to... He opened it with like, oh, do you want to do some acting for ABC TV? Mm -hmm. Which is the Disney-owned channel, which like things like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and things like that are on, right? Mm -hmm. The sorts of stuff I want to be doing, right? So I'm like, holy crap, yes. Sends it through and it's basically this little self tape thing. It's like meant to be a reaction video to a trailer that was released for a TV program, right? <laughs> and they were basically going to mash up all these little self tape reaction videos yeah, together. Yeah. It's okay. I'm like, I'm really, really grateful that the guy thought of me and sent it through. I am really grateful. But yeah. it was of absolutely no use to me because A, it was acting for ABC who can afford actors that were essentially basically posing it as a competition to get footage Mm -hmm. um which means no monies which means doesn't help my business it also wasn't really acting so much as like yeah do you know what i mean so it didn't boost my skills didn't work for my portfolio did absolutely nothing but because he you know they're they're in the normal system it's kind of like oh it's was he an actor no well then he's he's, obviously he's just done that naive he doesn't know he's doing something nice right Exactly, and and that's why I mean, like, I'm really really grateful. So what's the but, point? But but the the point is 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 that is again, well, I'm linking it to the friction in that because like for somebody else that's kind of in that sort of normal thing, it's like great, there's an opportunity, go take it. Mm-hmm. But because it's a different world, there's the lack of understanding. Just kind of see what I'm trying to I say. I get you saying the lack of understanding to. I think he just didn't understand the industry in the same way that maybe somebody who's watching doesn't understand the world of entrepreneurship, and so they don't know how to play. Right, which is kind of the point I was trying to make, but didn't really <laughs> uh, eloquently put. Right, yeah. and it's this, it's this, this thing of like, as 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 you say, like there are people that say to you, oh, like you know, you're not you never seem to be working. And it's like, well, well, no, I I am. I'm just not working on your time. I'm working on my time. And so there's that friction of people going, well, you know, you don't seem to be doing anything. But yeah, I know you're working, but I don't don't understand how you... And and it's kind of that... It's kind of what I'm trying to say is like, there's so many things that are kind of preset things that it's like... There's, yeah... I kind I kind of get what you're saying, but I think the main thing you're I think the point you're trying to make is the idea that people are so you're set in your worldview, and so you you only know the system works one way, and so you're playing by those right. rules, and so right. the idea is that actually when they do step into another world, right, the friction is they don't understand it, but then they're trying the to rules, tie the rules. The rules are different. They're playing a different game. Yeah, but I do think at the same time it's kind of like they're playing a different game, but they've it's also like, seen it's like another game advertised. Play, it's like you're trying to play. Connect Four, and they're trying to play the Connect Four with the rules of Monopoly. It just doesn't work. <laughs> kind of. I love the metaphor for music. <laughs> but I think the main thing is, obviously, the way that we've spoke about this before, friction's happening because people are saying, okay, I play this game, but there's entrepreneurship out there. And so they're looking at it, and then obviously they don't know the skill sets involved to now play in this realm, which actually is a really, it's really coming up. People are getting into it. People are seeing a new way of living. And I think... I think that's bit, that's where the friction's coming from. But at the same time, I think that's why we created the podcast. I think uh, yeah. 
ultimately, the main point here is that your current mindset, attitudes, beliefs, the way you're doing things, if you kind of want to get into entrepreneurship, you have to kind of get around people that these are very normal ways of doing things. So it's kind of, it's normalized to kind of invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. It's normalized to kind of be good with relationships so that you can make more clients. It's, mm -hmm. it's normal to kind of go to work on yourself. It's kind of, there are so many habits and things that we've kind of had to take on. But I think it's actually come from a lot of us actually modeling other people that we've listened to. So a podcast becomes a kind of form of modeling because you right. listen to the people you're that are getting interviewed uh -huh. and you say, wow, that worked for him. And now I'm going to try that. And you start modeling behaviors, kind of like having role models. You kind of hope that you adopt the way they've done things. And I think the bit, the good thing is that you can kind of like listen, like even with us, like we're sharing our stories, the way we've done things, the way we're kind of evolving. And so you might say, oh, well, Gem and Wayne have spoke about maybe um, sort of sleeping better or maybe getting morning routines and doing this sort of thing. And so before long, these become really normal habits yeah. and, and you start to then develop yourself and sort of pull away from maybe the nine to five lifestyle. Because I know when I was in my nine to five, I was sitting, I had like <laughs> Tim Ferriss four hour work week. I was listening to Pat Flynn podcast. I was uh -huh. listening to Mixergy. And what was happening is I'm no longer talking to everyone in the office who's kind of like saying, are oh, you going out for drinks in the evening or are you kind of going to... I don't know, just moaning about the general life. I'm actually listening to other people. And I mm -hmm. think the key point here is just like, who are you modeling? Who are the people you're listening yeah. to day to day? And how are they kind of having an influence on how you um, kind of conduct yourself? Right. And another thing I kind of wanted to put across is as well, since I've been, because I was having this conversation with my mum the other day, kind of about like money. And it was kind of like this idea about mm. certain people get paid minimum wage, seven, just over seven pound an hour. And then I know of people who get paid six, seven hundred pounds for an hour. And I was just saying, like, to the person who's getting paid that seven pound an hour, this seems ridiculous, unfair. But at the same time, the person who is now willing to pay seven hundred or willing to charge seven hundred pounds an hour, the people they're modeling are maybe people who are actually getting paid a lot more than right. that. And so I think the way you sort of level up or kind of kind of raise your consciousness or kind of develop yourself is that you're kind of getting around people who then bring your behaviors up or let you or they actually force you to question your current behaviors yeah i think that's more what it is because then they kind of go oh here's another possibility yeah or did I think you if, think you're, if you're surrounded by people that are being paid minimum wage like your your reality is reinforcing to you that minimum wage is is the way things are done. the way things are done and, and, the and only you just way, have to yeah. strive from there yeah, yeah. Uh, but if minimum wage is your starting point yeah um, and all you're doing is is using that as a starting point and trying to build up from there, your end results are going to be lower, presumably, mm -hmm. than somebody whose starting point is 100, 700 pounds an hour. Mm -hmm. um, because the it's almost like rather than aiming for the moon, mm -hmm. you've kind of aimed for the next town. In terms of like the minimum wage as well, to use that as, a, as an example, people always like flip it on, oh, the boss pays as rubbish. I'm like, no, you didn't ask for enough. And so it's uh -huh. kind of like... But then again, it's like, do you have the the modeling? Do you see people who are willing to kind of question how much they get paid, willing to prove that they bring value, willing to do these things? And I think they're the aspects that I've, I've actually found. The more people I work with, and I and then when I work with like really successful people, maybe got like million pound businesses as well, you just see how differently they talk to people, how uh -huh. they get stuff done, how they don't procrastinate. You just start to see behaviors and you just be like, wow, it's like I didn't know you could be so like, straight like straight cut with people and right. actually no bs and you just see the different habits that they all have and suddenly i start realizing that actually they do things in a certain way right. and you start modeling that behavior and again you start to kind of adopt it and it starts working out for you mm -hmm. so Definitely. i know we've got to get to a break now so yes we do yes so we will be back in just a moment right guys we need to take a moment thank our sponsor thank you very much thank you we're done <laughs> uh no university of northampton my god this show would not be happening right now if it wasn't for them, I don't think. Certainly not to this level. Not to this high quality Not to this quality high quality standard. level. So huge thank you to <laughs> University of Northampton, our old uni. Exactly. So they taught us the ways. <laughs> they taught us the ways of the force. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, like, the thing that I think we love about Northampton Uni over other unis, apart <laughs> from the fact that we went there, right? <laughs> Is the fact with our limited experience of other universities with our limited, but no, but I mean, I know, from, I from know. my perspective, Go wait, ahead. let me finish, let me finish. Zip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the University of Northampton is like, it's about their their whole kind of thing is about social enterprise. So it's not just about going there and getting a degree 
and leaving and hopefully getting a job. It's about going there, getting your degree, but also learning how to set up not just a business, but a social business. So it's a business that's out there to make good, positive social impact and make good social change. And the university has won so many awards for it. It gets so much recognition in the social enterprise space. Governments are always talking to them and stuff about how they can improve their social enterprise strategy. Honestly, if you're into social enterprise, if you're into possibly setting up a business, these guys are the you need to check out. So if you want to check them out, northampton.ac.uk, check them out. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. So guys, we want to talk to you about New Media Europe. N-M-E-U. N-M-E-U. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag N-M-E-U. I love that. Uh, we are so excited for this event. Like, honestly, I don't think we ever thought we would be a New Media Expo. No. But we're going to be. Yes, we are. We're going to be. We're not just going to be there as guests. <laughs> we're going to be there as guests. We're going to be on a panel yeah, on about a, freelancing. Yeah, freelancing. And we're going to be hosting the new Media Europe Awards. What's going to happen if we actually win an award? <gasps> Who knows? We will have to. I, you will, I will give you the award and then you can pass it back, it back over to, to me. That's and the then we'll one. do it. That's how it works. We'll work. figure it out. But yeah, so we're hosting awards. Never thought that was going to happen. And no, we're gonna never thought I was going to be a host. So you're going to have to give me some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you into the, the training boot camp. Cool. Uh, but we're going to be there. So uh, tickets are selling quite quick. Very quick. Very actually. quick. I mean, some like, are, some levels are sold out. Some levels are sold out completely. In fact, I believe there's only one type of ticket left. And I think there's only 100 of those type of tickets left. So you got to get on it, right? But if you want those tickets, just have a look. Go to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. Check it out. What is NMEU, Wayne? <laughs> you know what, the New Media Expo? Yeah, what is it? Oh, we, we didn't did really... this last time. Did people know New Media Expo? Oh, Maybe just a really little assume. bit. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, the New Media Expo is like it's like a conference type convention type thing for all those people producing new media so podcasts youtubers uh short videos short films documentaries all that sort of stuff so anything to do with like essentially online digital content that's what it's all about it's a big get together it's happening in london uh next month mid-june um, so it's happening we're gonna be there it's gonna be awesome dan miller's gonna be there from 48 days uh, he's like many other specialists in there. Yes, many, many, many specialists, including about many different things. There's going to be workshops <laughs> about how you can set up your new media businesses and things like that. So much good stuff. Honestly, it's going to be great. It's all on the website to see. To be all honest. on the websites. Yeah, powerfulnonsense.com forward slash nmeu. That's our link. Will take you straight to all of the breakdown of what you can expect and a little button to register and buy your tickets. Cool. Check it out. So, welcome back. Yes. I feel quite serene in this episode. It feels quite... I know. Mm, it's very different to the like sort of episode Like I should have like a pipe or something. Or <laughs> hmm. Not that I condone smoking, but... No. Maybe if it's like the... Oh, no. Even the flavoured tobacco is still tobacco. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. Maybe you should get like a bubble pipe. You know, there's little yeah, toy bubble pipes. Yeah, that's what I feel like I need. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> we're talking about... Like, who are you modelling? That's a question we're posing to you. So we've talked about, you know, uh, kind of negative reinforcements in a way, kind of how society may have moulded us into thinking a certain way. Um, and so, and it kind of becomes a bit of a, a loop, mm -hmm. an infinite loop. Well, I think you just start to reinforce those behaviours because obviously you attract the behaviours of the way that you currently act. Uh -huh. so. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, you're working for minimum wage and everybody around you is working for minimum wage. So you just assume everybody works for minimum wage first. And then that reinforces the fact that you're working for minimum wage. And then everybody just, else talks about how poor and broken yeah, they um, are. And so everybody else around you says, well, we should all be poor and broken. Never be always be skin and use uh -huh. that sort of language. And then suddenly it becomes a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy, really. Indeed. So you need to kind of try and break the loop somehow. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not going to say like we are out of that oh, loop because I still there's not. so much stuff that we're sort of still working through and it's it's mm -hmm. a sort of ongoing process where we I'm forcing myself to get around people that I'm thinking like wow mm -hmm. you blow my mindset open and I think that's what books do that's what podcasts do yeah. the content online is incredible on mm -hmm. YouTube and I think you've got to kind of go out of your way to smash your realities I think I tweeted something on uh, 
on our Twitter page the other day, and I think you kind of have to really go out of your way to challenge your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I think that shows somebody, somebody who's doing that shows they want to grow, they want to yeah. improve themselves. So, yeah, yeah I think you've got to try and, to shatter those beliefs. And I think you'll find the more you shatter those beliefs, I think the more, I think the, the happier you'll actually be. Yeah, I think initially... Gen generally <laughs> speaking, it's going to be tough to break that cycle and you're going to feel like shite at first because you're going to be so anxious, you're going to be fear-driven. Um, but I think once you just start dabbling a little bit, you don't even need to make any drastic changes to begin with. Just start making these tiny, tiny changes and just see if they start paying dividends. Like, it's such a cliche these days. It really is a cliche when it's like, oh, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. But it's cliche for a reason, honestly. Like, if you start spending more time with people that really know how to manage their finances, mm -hmm. you're going to become, you may not become as good as them at managing your finances, but you're going to become better at managing your finances just by osmosis, really. Mm -hmm. Particularly if they start, if you are talking about finances, you're going to start hearing a few things that they do and you're going to be like, oh, I might try that. And then you'll start experimenting and dabbling as an example. Um, so I think it's really important, as you were saying before we came back from the break, just get around the sorts of people that are where you want to be mm -hmm. um, in any aspect of your life. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and kind of spend less time with the people that are where you don't want to be for that particular aspect of your life, which yeah. is hard to do. It's not like cut them out of your life completely, but, but be aware it's a tough transition, but I think if you know now, I think it, the idea of this episode is where if you're modeling something, if you want to now learn to model other people because you want their lifestyle, I think you're questioning where you're currently at. And you're saying, well, my life isn't working for me right now. It's not getting me the results I want. And so a change is definitely in order. And I think mm -hmm. that does start with the people you're around. And sometimes, like I say, it just does start with listening to the podcast. So it might start reading a certain book and mm -hmm. in terms of that we know if we were around some of the top podcasts is this podcast would be a lot bigger yeah. than it currently is and sometimes but that's also something... i don't think we would have started this podcast if we hadn't been listening to podcasts <laughs> true definitely um and you know things like that do kind of account towards that like the fact that you're listening to this or watching this if you're on youtube like is a good sign that you're up for making some positive change mm -hmm. um and Okay, obviously it's better if you kind of take action on what we're saying. But even if you don't, over time, that's going to start to change your mindset. Um, I, I, like, I always think if I compare me now to where I was three years ago, I'm a very different person. I'm much more relaxed. I'm much less stressy. I mean, I have my moments. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not in kind of a default state of stress, for example, because that was one thing I really wanted to work on. It's like, how can I... So I took, I started pushing negative people away, got more positive people into my life, and it's it's paid dividends. Yeah, I think it's like a constant reinforcement. I think you kind of, you are someone who listens to podcasts, you listen to this content, you probably listen to a few others, and you probably hear the same things over and over again. I think sometimes that's necessary because I yeah. think you haven't actually taken it in. And sometimes yeah. maybe it's this 10th podcast that mentions get around good people that you actually realise, actually, do you know what? I do need to upgrade mm -hmm. my friendship group and I'm going to do it this time. So I do think that you got to think, I mean, you can go really woo-woo about this and say how subconscious it is and how a lot mm -hmm. of these things are so programmed deep in our heads about, I'm going to link to an actual uh, podcast that just came to mind about this sort of subconscious thinking, but it is there, it is true. Oh, definitely. And I think it is through content, it is through exposure. It's like, it's the same kind of like reverse marketing in a way. It's the idea that marketers are trying to change your minds over time in the same way that they set what reality is, what you think mm -hmm. is fashionable, what you think you should eat. And it's kind of like... right going out of your way to actually kind of say well yes i have think been. about the ridiculous haircuts that you see yeah. with people and the first time you see it you're like that is a ridiculous haircut and then you're rocking it the next week and then, well maybe <laughs> not the next week but like you're like oh what a ridiculous haircut and then you see more and more people with that ridiculous haircut because they've like oh no i like that haircut and mm -hmm. then because everybody else is liking that haircut suddenly that haircut becomes normal and so you're like well, wait, if everybody else has got their haircut, it's obviously not that silly. And then you start thinking, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll give it a go. Yeah, it's, you've, been, you've been encoded, you've been branded a certain way, and so you are following that. And I think that's 
what's really important about entrepreneurship is that I think you kind of forced it. And the thing is, we're all guilty of getting caught in the oh, same easy. traps. Like we can go and bang on about entrepreneurship all day long and you kind of say, well, you fall into the category of these kind of guys. And so I do think it is that sort of ongoing process where you know that you're falling into certain habits and certain behaviours and it's kind of like going away and then saying, okay, I did everything in that area and mm-hmm. then maybe I'm going to go look at another area and mm-hmm. expose myself to that and then see how that changes my reality in a way. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 So where are we going to take it next? I don't know. Where are we going to take it next? Hmm. <laughs> I have no notes. <laughs> We've done this off the cuff. Yeah. I just think um, some actual actionable steps might be a good way to actually okay. wrap things up because I think... As an example, because I'd obviously say, you know, spend more time with people that you want to be around that are kind of where you want to be. That's the actionable step. Yeah, I think that is that's an actual that's an actionable step. Obviously, it's telling people what to do, but I think actually people are thinking in their heads maybe like, well, okay, I want to get around millionaires, or I want to get around people who are super fit, uh-huh. or I want to get around people well, who are of, in their own businesses. Okay. okay, you have to. I think with things like this, is kind of look at what tools and things you've got in your network. In this case, look at what network you have, and kind of start there. Because if you send an email to Richard Branson saying. I want to spend time with you. He's probably going to ignore your email entirely, for one thing. He's also going to think you're a little bit weird, right? So you've kind of got to start with what you've got, right? Mm -hmm. And then move from there. But one thing I would say, if you really want to get around those sorts of people and you don't have a strong network to do so, start the podcast. (laughs) Definitely. In fact, we talked about this in the world record-breaking episode Mm -hmm. of a podcast. 36 hours Mm -hmm. um but it was kind of the main talking point of what we're talking about is if you start a podcast or something some content thing um you're going to be able to get around these sorts of people because actually they're going to want to talk about that sort of stuff a lot of them are very willing to kind of send the elevator back down Mm -hmm. um and some of the people that people have managed to get on their podcasts is quite astounding yeah, and I think John Lee Dumas actually says something really good at the end of every episode. I think he's like, you've just been spending time. You're like the, uh-huh. what does he say? Average like? of the five people you spend the most time with and you've just spent 30 minutes. Yeah, with me and, da, 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 and somebody else. And I think that's a good thing to think about as well. Like sometimes you don't need the direct contact with people. Sometimes it is reading books. You've got to think there are years and years worth of like books right. out there or people's mindsets who would learn everything you're trying to learn or overcome things that you thought, that you think you're suffering with. And so you might as well kind of like suck in that knowledge first. And then maybe that leads you to the actual connection. Like we said, we've had people on the podcast where it started reading the book and then you just reach out to them and suddenly they let you in and they want to speak to you. Mm-hmm. But I think there's so many ways nowadays to get in contact with people. And it doesn't, it doesn't actually have to be physical one-to-one to actually get the information right. to change the way you think. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I just think you ought to just be creative with it, got to be experimental. Yeah. Got to know what you want, number one. Know mm-hmm. what kind of changes you want to make. Know where well, you're messing up. Well, I mean, that's the, up. that's the big thing as well is, you know, you've got to know what it is that you want to change, first of all. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, if it's, you know, oh, I actually never really wanted to get a job. I've always wanted to go out on my own and set my own business. Well, get around people who have their own business. Like, you're not going to get that from being around academics. Mm-hmm. You're just not. Unless those academics have previously set up a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's one of a big struggle for a lot of people. I think sometimes people feel like they want to change and they just don't know where uh-huh. to start. And it is that idea that you're kind of around people that aren't doing anything like what you want to do. And that's, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's quite depressing really. You kind of, you know you feel like you want to do something. I think like we've, we spoke about it before. It's, it's like a, such a good time, a good mm-hmm. place in society and in, in the economy right now to kind of go out and do what you want. And just experiment as well yeah i just and i just think the people are out there i think you now know i think gary v says he's like if if there's um somebody else out there who looks like you doing what you want to do then it means it, you can do it, it means too. you can do it too do you know yeah i that i was watching that episode i think yesterday and uh-huh. i was like boom nailed it mm-hmm. and i think that kind of then cuts it's through also the... like one of my favorite steve jobs quotes steve jobs alert haven't brought him up for a while um <laughs> But like he says a similar thing and is this is the thing which really made me start going, hang on, maybe this whole entrepreneurship thing and personal development thing is a good idea. It was when he said, um, you grow up in this thing that we called the world, <laughs> which tells you that it works in a certain way. And then one day you wake up and you realize that this world that you've been brought up in 
has been built by people no smarter than you. And then when you realise that, and you think, well, I mean, obviously I'm paraphrasing here, because you think, well, you know, if they can do it, you know, obviously I can contribute. And then you start adjusting things and poking things around and just seeing what happens when you do. That's when the kind of the world, your worldview just completely changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's just so powerful. I think it is showing people that when you realise that you can make a difference or make a change or live if live the life that you want in your way, mm -hmm. like somebody else is doing that. So it means you have the option and it's just kind of figuring that out, getting the help, asking for the help and just, I think number one, if you've already got past that hurdle where you've questioned your beliefs and you want something better, you're on the path. Yeah. And I think that's what happens to us. That's mm -hmm. what happened to us. And now it means like, mm -hmm. that's it. You're just on it now. You know that you can have, you can influence your own life. Yeah. And there's not somebody else in control of what you can achieve. And I think that's the most powerful thing. You just get around people that are doing it. Mm -hmm. And you'll do it too, eventually. You can do it too with Can Do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So that's been a bit of a um, mellow episode. I don't know. Yeah. No. We'll have to have a look back at that and see how it I think it it's went, a very but... different episode to one we've done for a while. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of I think good that stuff it was in quite there. Um, nighttime night time listening. Night time listening. Uh, Before bed. Exactly. Just we to get you quite thinking. Mellow, like... Yeah. I feel like we should have talked like this for the whole episode. Probably not. No, that would not. That would keep me up at night. That exactly. would definitely not put me to sleep. All right, let's um, wrap things up. Yes, let's. So um, thanks as always for tuning in. Mm -hmm. Always we, appreciate uh, your time. We do. We do, always. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd also really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. Or leave some comments. Say leave something. Leave some comments, yeah. Like, who are you, who are you modelling? Mm. We want to know. Leave it in the comments. Let's get chatting. Um, and also, if you're listening to the podcast, which we know a lot of you are, and you haven't left a review yet, review yet <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, that's right. That's right, you, Bill. Sat on the tube. Bill's just like freaking out now. <laughs> that's right, Bill. I'm watching you. And you haven't left a review yet. So, Bill, Bill. Get on it. Just open up the podcast app. Type in powerful nonsense. He's like, I've got no internet connection, Wayne. Well, you know, <laughs> when you're next at a station, hook on the Wi-Fi. Right? <laughs> Just type in powerful nonsense. Hit the write a review button. Write a review. Five stars. Done. Took you like 30 seconds. And you, David. <laughs> I know you as well. Mm. Thanks. And some of our female listeners. Oh, uh, yes, obviously. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Jade. There we go. Jade, Jade. Get on it. Jade, yes. Cool. <laughs> We've been powerful nonsense. I don't really know what that was, to be honest. <laughs> I went off on one there. You've been our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne needs some lunch. Yeah, right. And we're out of here. We'll catch you next time. See you later. <laughs>